interventress, chief psychiatrist. I'll be overseeing your care for the next six months. This is my associate, Dr. Julian Rush. I'll be conducting the psychological evaluation. Hey everyone, this is Digital Charcuterie. I'm James, thanks for stopping by. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. We're on our way to 4,000 subscribers and to all of our new subscribers, thank you so much for your support and joining us. We really appreciate it here. Before we continue, if you are not caught up in the first seven episodes of The Penguin, hit that pause button, go watch them, and I'll see you in seven hours. Let's get going. The Penguin has one episode left to go. I am, of course, super excited. I've been covering this show since the beginning, and I love it. I love talking the theories and speculations. And I've done two videos on Dr. Julian Rush on the channel so far, and who is he? Who could he be? What's the purpose of this character? But one comment continues to just spam my comments. Not really spam, I love seeing them. If you have a comment, if you believe who you think Julian Rush is, let me know in the comments down below. I saw one that he might be Professor Pig. Loved that theory. But let's move on. The one that I've been getting the most, the theory I've been getting the most is that he is a figment of Sophia's imagination. He is in her mind. She has manifested Julian Rush in her life. He doesn't actually exist. Does he communicate with anybody else? Does he have scenes with any other characters? Until the most recent episode, I suppose the answer would be not Really, a door opens, I guess, and Dr. Ventress does allude to him the first time we meet him. But aside from that, there hasn't been much interaction with Julian Rush with other characters other than Sophia. So let's look into this. Could Julian Rush be a figment of Sophia Falcone, Sophia Gigante's imagination? You've been in therapy before, I see, with uh, Dr. Shaw. At first, my first feeling was, no, this didn't cross my mind right away, but there are little pieces here and there that you're like, well, he doesn't feel right. There is something very, very off about it, and I actually like Theo Rossi's performance here because you're never quite sure what's going on. And while you want to speculate that he might be Mad Hatter, might be Hugo Strange, might be Professor Pig, like I said, might be Scarecrow, which was my very first reaction to this character, you start to think all that, and that's what you kind of want to believe, but maybe the truth of who he is is laying right in front of us the entire time. has been hitting, hiding in plain sight and the lack of interactions he has with other characters. Now, of course, I have to say in episode seven, he does interact with Francis, with Oz Cobb's mom, right? He has the lights therapy session on her and Sophia barges in and says, I need to talk to you. When she barges in, the door opens, that's one hint, and the guard at the door kind of gives a glimpse, but they cut away before it and then he's back to a stoic look in the room. Now, you could argue that that, the Ventress, and also, of course, at the end of episode three, or at the beginning of episode four, I should say, she calls Julian to pick her up. So who does she call if not Julian? That, of course, remains to be seen. We don't really know. She could have called a driver, somebody that she knows, somebody that works for her family or whatever. There, are, Those people do exist, and she could have just thought in her mind that she was calling Julian Rush, and that's what we saw. We saw the perception of what she perceives to be true. That is an idea, and for, for the purpose of this video, we're gonna go along with that is what actually happened. But when she wakes up, we get this image here. Now, I know how lenses work and lighting work and lights and all that work, so I understand what's actually happening here, but they kept it like this, and they shot it like this on purpose. And look at this, you can see right through them. Is this a hint, a clue, of who Julian Rush actually is. Is he a figment of Sophia Gigante's, at this point in time, Sophia Falcone's imagination? Is this something that she's built through childhood trauma? Dissociative identity disorder is a complex psychological disorder typically arising from severe trauma during early childhood, often due to physical, sexual, or emotional abuse. The trauma can lead the mind to compartmentalize painful memories or personal aspects as a coping mechanism. The individual may develop distinctive identities or alters with unique characteristics, behaviors, and even memories. These alters emerge as a way to handle stress or fulfill unmet psychological needs. Two moments that really stick out for me as well is in episode 7 when Sophia is speaking with Julian in the room. She looks over at this picture and this is the same picture she saw when her mother was 
hung. This picture could be the first time she ever met Julian Rush in her mind. This could be the moment she created Julian Rush and looking at the picture is a reference to that. Also, when we see Julian with Francis doing the light therapy, before we get there, there's a transition where we see the light over Sophia's face first. This could also be a little nod to this not being quite what it appears. This is half a twin Maroni is dead. Us killed him. This isn't so dissimilar from Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, but also Fight Club. And Fight Club is the one that most people seem to associate Sophia with, with the Tyler Durden aspect of it, of the manifestation of almost the person they want to be. And in episode seven, if you remember, when Oz is getting pulled out, when she's visited Gia and she's seen what's happened, how she's this little girl is cutting herself and the guilt, the guilt ridden Sophia is like, I can't do this anymore. Oz, co Oz Cobb calls and said, hey, Give me my mom and I will give you everything you want. And Sophia says, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. I'm over it. Let's just give Francis to Oz. And it's Julian Rush that says, are you crazy? What do you want? What do you want? You're, you're not your father's legacy. You're your own person. And he's talking directly to her, saying exactly what she wants to hear, which is also a theme of this show where everybody says everything that everybody else wants to hear, but never the truth. Also, when Sophia is in Arkham, after she's gone through her first little while there, Julian comes to talk to her and he discusses with her how it feels. And he mentions how she had a psychiatrist before after the passing of her mother. And her mother, the trauma of finding her mother hung in her house could be what caused this to happen. And it did, maybe didn't happen overnight. Maybe it was a manifestation. However, the very first time Sophia meets Julian Rush, when Dr. Ventra says this is Dr. Julian Rush, there is a look, an understanding between the two, almost as if they've known each other, as if they've crossed paths in the past. This look, you can't avoid this look. Check it out. This is it right here. There's clearly something here. And later on, of course, Julia says maybe she's telling the truth when, she, when Sophia keeps pleading her innocence to Julian Rush. So I think when you look at all of the evidence presented at hand, it's not so clear cut, obviously, because it's still a debate, but I am getting the comments, like I said, and I love the comments. It's the best to see when people are speculating, especially this, because as much as I love the idea of him being a character within the Batman Lauren universe, this is something else. And one other thing I want to bring up is the movie Joker, the first Joker, the second Joker, I guess a little bit, but, but for Leo Duh, a little bit, but let's talk the first Joker when a lot of what we see are manifestations within the Joker's mind. That could be something at play here because again, Sofia Falcone Gigante is very similar to the Joker. They've had a lot of Joker tropes incorporated in this character. I've also thought that Julian Rush has been a lot very similar to Harley Quinn, to Sofia's Joker in a lot of ways. And so when you compare that and then you think of that movie and how so much of that movie is within Arthur Fleck's mind, it kind of also works. And I think, you know, the shot here, like I said, even though I know it's obviously the lens and the lighting and whatnot, I still think that this could be a foreshadowing moment, that they could be showing us like, hey, this guy is not everything he seems. He might not even be present. He's not actually there. This is all within her mind. And don't be surprised if in the last episode, we go into this room, into his psychiatry office, and it is just a room in Falcone manner. He always just seems to approach her. He comes out of nowhere. He enters the room. He's like, I want to join you. I knew it was you on the news. I want to be it. It's very odd. People... I got a lot of comments after that episode saying, I didn't like what happened there. He kind of came out of nowhere. If he is a figment of her imagination, if he is, she, he is a manifestation of her mind, someone that she creates to cope with the trauma of her mother's passing, she goes through psychiatry and loses Julian Rush for years. And then later on when she's put in Arkham and put through all of that trauma, he reemerges. This fictional character within her mind reemerges. She can, in her mind, Ventress mentions Julian Rush. In her mind, you know, it's the Tyler Durden aspect of it where he's a separate person and the people around her knows that it's another creation that she has created and they accept it and kind of go with it and they, they never speak of them together. We're going to find out. There's one episode to go. So what do you guys think? Is Julian Rush a figment of Sophia Gigante's mind, of her trauma? Has it, her trauma broken through and created a psychiatrist character to help her cope with all the trauma in her life? Or... Is he Professor Pig? Because I really like that one. I, I really want Matt Hatter in this Matt Reeves universe, though. Don't get me wrong. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I really appreciate it. Give us a like and subscribe. And until next time, maybe the master of your own universe.